All right, everyone. Hello and welcome to this month's episode of Wheel Tapping. As always, I am joined by Mr. Tony Fryer, and my name is Chris Whippan. Hello, Tony. How are we doing today? Mr. Whippan, I'm doing fantastic. Hopefully you are the same. I am doing wonderful. I mean, ski season's just around the corner. My mountain's opening. Uh, so things are, you know, getting the skis waxed up and grabbing my juicy fruit. It's going to be a great one. I'm excited. <laughs> Very excited. So, I mean, you guys have been skiing a little longer than I have out there, but, you know, it is what it not, is. Not this guy now. Now, Sweater <laughs> Mike. Sweater Mike goes skiing all the time. Yes, he does. He does. And uh, I'll have to make sure I get out there to uh, ski with him this year. But enough about skiing. But the people at home did not join us to talk about skiing. They joined us to discuss 1822 today. I'm excited. Are you? Oh, heck yeah, man. This is uh, one of my favorite games. It is. And it's uh, it kind of has a little history for us personally, because it was the first 18xx you and I actually played together. It so is. It, it certainly holds a, a special place in that. Um, we're just going to really talk about the core 22 and the Great Britain variants um, as far as it relates um, but we're not going to talk about all the variations either now or in the future that are coming, right? Does that make sense? We'll just kind of cover that. You got it, pal. All right. So 22 is a, a little bit of a different beast. It was designed in 2016 by Simon Cutforth. It's published by All Aboard Games, which means Scott Peterson did the artwork for it. Nothing too crazy there. It plays three to six, so it can handle little larger counts for that. And it definitely is going to be one of the longer games. Our games seem to plop in right around six, seven hours. How long do yours usually take? Yeah, six to eight. Six closer, to eight. Probably closer to the eight with our group. Well, how, how big do you usually play this one? Uh, four or five, usually. Okay. All yeah. right. So you, I usually play three to four, so that's probably one reason why. So as far as the comparisons to 30, 22 is its own animal in a way. I think it's almost its own kind of subgenre of 18xx games that's kind of springing up because it's the way its auctions are based and things like that. So we'll talk about that because we need, we need a whole phase to talk about the auctions, I think. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I think we have that set up for today, too. We might. We might. We may <laughs> we have might. planned some stuff. It does happen yes. from time to time. Yes. It definitely has a ton of privates. Again, something we're going to talk about in a bit. Floating majors, It they pretty much floated 20% at the beginning of the game, so you can get things up and running. It's also incremental. Uh, but once you hit that 50% mark, it will actually turn into full cap. Well, yeah, later in the game, they become full cap. Right. So yeah. it kind of helps with that late game and cash infusion. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And there is most certainly a train rush in this game. Uh, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the game forces it on you <laughs> to a large extent, the way it exports trains. Um, I don't mind that. I, I like yeah. that mechanic. I do too. I think it, it really hustles the... I think a lot of games that have the grow up mechanic or the merging mechanic i think they can kind of bog down sometimes especially with mm -hmm. new players because they they're not the engines aren't moving fast enough and they're just happy to collect the minor 50 50 money and mm -hmm. i think that this export uh concept i think kind of helps say no you need to start thinking about your trains like how fast can i get my l to a two yeah. and how how fast can i get that three and how many companies are going to get threes i think you need to be thinking that out of the gate which is nice. And it's got your standard 2D stock market. Nothing too crazy there. It's pretty, it's both wide and deep, you know, deep and wide. So it's nothing, yeah. but it's uh, it's your standard 2D market. It does have a a whole yellow section. Mm -hmm. um, if, I, if I bring this up, I'll just show you real quick. It does have that whole yellow section off to the side there, which means that those shares, and if I'm misspeaking, please tell me, they do not count against your cert limit. Uh, at that time, right? So you can actually throw a company down into there pretty quickly, get get a few certificates, and you can, you can have a little bit of shenanigans going on with that. Uh, but I I don't usually butt up into the cert limit in this game. Oh, okay. 
So I'm, but I, I'm also notoriously a bad player. Um, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see a lot of yellow strategy going on in this game, in at least with our group. And maybe that's group think. But, it might um, be. Yeah. yeah, it's, um, you know, my group, every now and then somebody will try it because they want to, you know, push the lever and see what the buttons do. But it's mm -hmm. it's not too crazy. Not too crazy. Yeah. All right. So that's that's the basics of the game in the shell. We did leave a lot of stuff for us to cover later because a we can't just talk about the the auction in this little blurb. It needs its whole section and right. even the train rush and <clears throat> and the map. So why don't we just jump right into our yellow phase today, which is going to be that map, for instance. It's uh the map itself is pretty large here. I mean it it's it, it's deceptively long <laughs> and skinny it is and of course it's helped by the fact that you have the one inch hex size so it's about 50 percent smaller than what we're used to seeing so it looks like oh you're just playing a normal 18xx game until you start laying tiles and you're like wow this is actually a very very large map um which i love i love the big the big epic scale that is kind of quiet and it kind of sneaks up on you. <laughs> yeah. Most so, definitely. Yeah. So, so give me some thoughts on the map here. Cause we, we know it's big. We know it's, it's epic. We're down here in the corner. You seem to like the English channel. I, I saw that in our notes. I have never, two things Chris has never made work in this map is the <laughs> North and the South. Um, no, <laughs> the North. You're and the, English in the channel. Middle. <laughs> <laughs> and the English channel. Um, I've yet to really be able to kind of make that that happen. So you seem to like it. So so let's talk a little bit about this this monstrosity of a map here. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, you mentioned the English channel and definitely it can be a lucrative place to run trains at the end, you know, the last, you know, maybe two thirds of the game and specifically the last half of the game. Right, and there will be two tracks in the in the late stages of the game going over there to France. So you could actually work out the routes to to hit that uh, a couple of times, you know, with different trains, and uh, make plenty of money, which is a good good thing, of course. Yeah, so the English but, you know, Channel down there in the corner. Um, yeah, it's expensive. It's a hundred bucks, or excuse me, a hundred pounds. Yes. To uh, place that tile, so uh, it's not uh, it's not cheap. No, and um, I mean there is a a miner that comes with the token in it. If I'm a not private, mistaken. a private that does come with the token, so that helps yes. certainly. But it's also, I think, the other thing is that it's a late opener. It's a dead end all during yellow. You're yeah. you're you're not getting there until greens at least, and even then, I mean, sixty is a a pretty solid green. I think you know destination. Oh, absolutely, wise. absolutely. Yeah, and it pegs out at uh, it uh, looks like 120 bucks. So that's a nice, uh, nice lucrative thing. But of course, nice. you know, London is really where it's at um, because it's a lot of these games that we discuss. For instance, when we talked about Russia, you had to be in Moscow. Here, you have to be in London. If you're not in London, you're you're missing money. Or if you're up north. Chances are you're going to end up coming down far enough where you can start to dink. I mean, you're going to hit Birmingham potentially, but you're definitely going to want to at least try to get a run into London. One of the cool things about London, though, is, and you're right, it is a, a definite center of commerce there and mm -hmm. uh, therefore revenue. But it uh, no track passes through London, right? It's just a terminus. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to get a run to London, as long as you've built good track and tokens outside of that, right? So right. it's great to have a token in London guaranteed to, you know, to get a start out of there. But, um, you know, it's not like you are going to get tokened out of passing through London because <laughs> that just doesn't exist. So right. I find that takes a little bit of the sting out of that being such a revenue centric part. And I, I, that has to be definitely like a consideration by design because it never connects it. Like it's in, in a lot of these games, you know, oh, it'll connect in in gray or brown or what. Nope. Nope. Unlike, say, China, China does that right. You know, that'll eventually go 
full pass through, but this one, nope, no, no dice, no dice at all. No dice. The other thing is too, like there, there are a lot of ticks around and there's some, some cool miners that help you have some fun with that and some privates. I mean, that let you have fun with ticks. Um, so, you know, you, you don't want to build them initially, but then you want to have them around because you mm -hmm. want to be able to pick them up. Um, for some of the later trains, then we'll, we'll get into that when we talk about trains. What do you think about this quagmire over in Cardiff? Because over here on, on the, the Southwest side down here, like this is Cardiff right in here, people it's, oh man, look at that, that red it's, you know, you have all these off boards that are kind of like dead ends and tick ends and it's. It can be very, and everything's expensive because you have to get through all the marshland and everything. Sure. So I, again, I struggle to have good strategies out there and people can, if you're not getting help, it can be a little expensive, but uh, have you had success in that corner at all? Oh yeah. Um, it's a fun little corner. And you know, that uh, minor number 24 is always um, starting in the first stock round. So you're going to get some activity there. And just depending on how uh, how the other miners come out into the game, uh, you can build some really nice synergies over there. So that's it, boys and girls. That's all you're getting. Yeah, um, yeah. I tend to find the middles a lot of fun. You know, you have the Manchester Birmingham runs. Uh, you can get those set up. I think that's a lot of fun. And then the we have the north where there's a lot of mountains and a lot of space. And it takes a lot of time to build some of these runs. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, like you, you mentioned the middle and the, the MR, the Midland Railway, is one of my favorites in this game. Right. Um, you know, I like to play red, so, you know. <laughs> but no, it's got, it's got nice position to, uh, to do some good track, right? Yep. Um, hit, hit the Manchester, the Birmingham. You could even hit London. You know, it's in good, good position. And I've seen people do okay in the north if you, let them be alone up there. So that's not necessarily a good idea to let somebody play alone up there, but it's definitely not as lucrative as the South. I mean, the off boards are kind of off putting because, you know, you have the Highlands, which is pretty, pretty tame at 10 during the, the yellow and the green, which is kind of rough up here. Um, and then, but you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 is not horrible. Um, but then we come down here to with Glasgow and it gets a little better. Hey, you run a you run an E train up there in gray, and that's worth twice that. So yeah, if you have a token there, so yeah, good point. Um, before we get to that though, let's uh, yeah. let's talk a little bit about the destinations because I think that this is kind of a a big key to the map, the companies <laughs> you want, the synergy you're trying to create between uh, the majors you're going to choose to open or the miners you're going to use to merge in. What are your feelings on the destinations in this game? Well, I like them. Okay. Number one, just, you know, just because of the quote unquote historical flavor of it, you know, there's a destination for this railroad, but, um, you know, you get extra money when, uh, when you serve both your home and your destination. So it's important to think about where your destination is as well as where your home is and how those things both play into possible synergies with minor companies. Yeah which I think is a blast. And I think if you are, yeah. if you're playing this like for the first time, I think one of the, the, the more fun companies to own is I affectionately call it the lawnmower. Um, but the LNWR, because yeah. you actually get, uh, both your tokens at the beginning. Uh, so you can actually kind of work towards from both ends if you want, yeah. or you can just ignore London and figure oh, I'll deal with that eventually. And just kind of work up there in the Manchester section and just kind of keep plugging away at it, which I think is oh, a, yeah. that can be a lot of fun. And uh, maybe you don't win with it every time, but I think it's definitely one of the more active companies early on. There are a lot of different intricate things we can do. When we talk about the miners, they are kind of spread all over the board. There are whenever you see a number on the map, if you're following along in the video here, um, they start in the north with one all the way up there, and they go all the way down here to the bottom, which I believe is 24 is the, uh, the highest one in the standard version. Plus gives us a few more, as you would expect from the plus. Come on. Plus. The plus. But they kind of, they're all over. 
you know, we'll get to when we talk a little bit about the companies, but, you know, just it really kind of can play around with that synergy you're trying to develop with also the way the majors come out. Before we get to that, because, wow, there's going to be a lot of feels that kind of go along with that, I think. Let's move on to the green phase. And the green phase is going to be all about the train rush, because this one, this one's fun. We start with the local. I, I love the local because the local makes me feel like I don't have to wait three turns to do something. Well, well, with the locals, you um, remember, you get the choice. If there's a when you start a minor company, right, you can in your housekeeping phase buy a local train right. and run it right away. So you or, actually, or, or if there's no locals or you want really want a two train, you know, but like buy the local upgrade it, right? Because because <laughs> the L's can upgrade the twos, which is nice. They just flip over and it's uh it's pretty affordable. But if you're not going to have oh, yeah. a two run for you know three rounds, then the L is great because you're just dinking your home and yeah, picking up. Yeah, the L is kind of like a one plus one train. You can serve <laughs> a city and a doink. Yep. A tick for those of you up here in the Northeast. Ah, sorry. <laughs> well, well, we could also go with like a basic 18xx parlance and say a city and a town. And a the, town. A town. To be I, correct. I learned ticks. You learned doinks. I think doinks is a little more fun. Dits. I heard dits. Dits. That's another one. Yeah. yeah. They're fun because, you know, you can get these miners running up. And of course, they're standard miners. They pay 50-50. Nothing crazy there, but you can really get a lot of track out of them because they, they're just sitting there laying track, laying track, laying track, getting ready to, to grow up and hang out with the big boys. So why don't you walk us through a little bit? Because there is a train export mechanism in this game. And yeah, yeah, yeah. If your group is well, like, oh, I don't want to open that or I don't want to bid on that. And it's yeah. going to negatively impact your train rush. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe the first thing to say about that is part of the train rush is, you know, they're, when all these miners start at the beginning of the game, right. they're all running the local trains, and they're all rushing to have enough money to upgrade their locals to a two train. Yep. Because the big bad three train comes out, and it kills all the locals, right? All the locals. <laughs> right. And so then that ties into that export mechanic during the – stock round when you're selling the minor companies at auction right. there's four of them that are for sale and um they're numbered one two three and four right right and if you don't sell for every company you don't sell one of those l trains is going to get exported from the game Oof. <laughs> but but then if company number one didn't sell an additional l train will go away so those l trains depending on what miners are up and how, you know, how people can figure out how to use them in their um, portfolios that they're building. Right. You know, the L train, L trains being exported, you know, might be a variable level for, from game to game to game, but nevertheless, it's still a, a race against time to where you're trying to at least get a two train in your company because the guy who gets the first three train is going to cause you know a few problems for her. For some of those minor companies, right. and that and that export mechanic is really you know a critical aspect of that. And then of course, once the L trains are gone, the export mechanic will continue, right? But only that first train, the number one or that first miner, I should say, that that that's in box number one is is going to export a train one train if it doesn't sell, which is cool because that keeps the game going, right? Yeah. And you know, I've seen lots of situations where a person in the stock round, let's say the top train is the first four. If if that number one minor company doesn't get sold, the game is going to export that four train and kill the twos, right? I've seen lots of situations where someone will, they will buy that miner, <laughs> even though they don't <laughs> really, really, really want it, just to not have the four train go away so that they can play, you know, games and stuff during the stock round or during the operating round. I've also seen people run out of cash because they go crazy in the auctions. Uh, and then all of a sudden you're staring at um, everybody. We're about to lose all the trains and this is going to be a problem and nobody yeah. can afford 
to pick up any miners to stop it too, because you know you can get really caught up in some of the auctions, and if some really good privates come out, you're gonna they're gonna cost some money, and then you're gonna yeah, and, and you know there there is emergency train buying in this game, mm -hmm. and um, if you get caught like that, and um, you you find a a minor company doesn't have a train, you're gonna have to purchase it one right, which right. means you know, could be loans being taken, which are, you know, potentially a good thing. Right. Some they're, loans are good. Yeah, they're not brutal. We're not talking 18, 17 loans here. They're, they're, not, <laughs> they're not horrible. No, they're not <laughs> friendly. That's, but, you know, but a small loan is no big deal. Yeah. A small loan is a tool. Yes. But yes. but with the emergency train buying, it, it helps keep people in a game that they might otherwise get out of early i think and that's kind of the nice thing that the loan will do is it, it can allow somebody to stay in who may have otherwise just made a mistake which may or may not be a good or bad thing we'll we'll have to leave no. that for feelings for the gray phase <laughs> for the gray. <laughs> <laughs> but but we're not in gray phase we're in brown so you know we're gonna go to brown now let's All go right. to brown someone bought a five train someone bought a five train you know we're we're not rusting anything but you're scared <laughs> because the the fours are not long for this world. Um, because there's there's never enough five trains. There's just you, you save enough money for a five, and then the next thing you know, you're like, I might need money for a six or a seven because I can't afford it now. Um, that's, right. that's where we are. So this is really where I think we need to talk about the mergers, the auctions, and the privates. Sure. I, I struggled. I kind of wanted to talk about this earlier, but I think it makes sense to kind of have the, the base of the map and the base of the train rush to <clears> kind of <throat> understand what's going on with this auction. Because I think okay, that, sure. you know, give you the complete picture of how this this stuff all works. Why don't we start with the, the privates? Because okay. there are a bunch. Um, and we're going to really just talk about basic 22 plus adds more miners it adds more privates uh more 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 good 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 all those fun things that we love but essentially there are some fun privates in here i think there's a uh you know you have the passenger car privates we have the there is a rocket i believe that kind of comes out where you can get the it comes with the 2p that you can then oh, just, the 2p yep you can drop it right into a company um which i think is a lot of fun uh, there's, you talked about a few of them. Do you have a couple that come to mind? I do. Uh, Cause I think 1822 has a handful of, at least to me, innovative, um, right. private companies, or as the British say, innovative. Yeah. Since like, this is a British game, right? So. Right. And I, and I think that that's important because, you know, a lot of times when we play this, I mean, and very recently, um, it, it comes up in conversation. Oh, you're, it's the BNO, meaning that it it's it behaves exactly like the the private from 1830 behaves exactly right. like the BNO. It comes with the president's <clears throat> share, you know. And I think that we kind of get locked into this. So when we see innovation in this space, uh, it's it's a lot of fun and it's exciting. And I think it's one of the hallmarks that set. All three of these topics, the mergers, the auctions, the privates, the the growing things up, I think all of this stuff is innovative, and I, I love it. So so what are you, some of your favorite privates? I mentioned mine. Yeah. Um, so the 2P is definitely one of my favorites, and I think, it, you know, so I think it's innovative. I, I haven't seen it in other games, and I certainly haven't played all the games out there, but it's a it's a permanent two train. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you can handle its revenue – distinctly from the revenue of the other trains. So you can hoard that revenue or pay that revenue or, you know, it's, it's, I think it's really neat and it offers you some good flexibility. Yeah. I love um, that. There's a, there's a five train out there and it's always the first private in the game. So the five train is going to be up for auction. So here, here you are in the auction, you can buy a five train. And uh -huh. you can't use it till five trains are available. Sure. But one of your companies will have a permanent train in the bag that's worth $500. So what are you going to bid on that? And if, <laughs> if you save it when that when this phase happens, you can pick up a company, open it, 
dump the five in and run it. You don't yeah. have to waste a turn. You probably right. already have track for it. So you can, I mean, you can just out of the gate go, which is great yeah. because sometimes it catches people out too, I think. Um, oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Because um, they're like, oh, I forgot that you had the ability to do that. <laughs> I also like the Highland Railway. Mm. But I like the idea of the Highland Railway better than I like the Highland Railway. Because the Highland <laughs> Railway, it pays $10 per phase. So in phase three, it's paying 30 bucks, right? Right. Um, to its charter and to the owner. So it's, mm. it's very, very rich. And in my opinion, I think too rich. Okay. And in fact, I... Uh, I throw it out of the game now that I have 22, 1822 plus because 1822 plus has the Canterbury and Winstable railway, okay. which is the same mechanic, but it's five bucks per phase. Okay. So it's not so quite it's, as it's rich. half as rich. And I feel like that's more, I don't know, sane. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, the offshore tax haven is the last one that I really think is, is cool. It's, it's, it seems very situational because it's this, it's this charter that you, when you buy a share, you can put a share on that charter and you never get to touch it again. Nope. But it doesn't count against the limit and all the dividends just stack up on it. So, you know, you're, you're, it's free money and a free share slot, you know. And of course there's also, you know, your tunnelers and your, your wetland builders and you, yeah. you do have all those. Um, and, but they're not just your normal, get a discount on a, a tunnel or a mountain They're They tend to do this, well, you can either build this hex mm -hmm. or you can pay half or you get the discount, mm -hmm. which is kind of a nice thing because sometimes you can, like, for instance, if you want to upgrade, uh, I believe Manchester is a mountain. So if you need to upgrade that, you know, and you don't have that money, well, guess what? Your private can do it for you. Boom. Yeah. Right in. So yeah. it, it definitely has some, uh, some fun and the auction for them are great, but you Man, it's every now and then something goes really cheap. Like somebody gets that five train and it's 150 bucks and you are just like, you know, I didn't want to bid against you, but that's still too cheap. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. That's that, five train. Yeah, but that's 150 bucks you're not earning revenue with. Yeah. Or in an arguably long part of the game. So, right. Could you do something else with that money? Make more money? Because the five train, I don't believe that private pays anything, if I'm not mistaken. Or if it uh, does, it's small. Yeah, I, I think it's a zero, you know. So you're definitely forward investing in yeah. security, future security. Right. But it's nice because, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, you can buy that poison four because you don't care. <laughs> you know, you can also open a miner with it real quick and get it up and running in no time if you if a good miner comes out and you can afford it. So the auction uh, is definitely interesting. It's mm. uh, because we are doing this uh, I, I I said off air earlier. It's it's a little like um, the auction in Las Vegas Showdown where we're just kind of <laughs> we keep moving cubes around and keep bidding on it. So you can see here on the map we have all these little boxes over here and our cubes are marching around that. But the caveat is, is that once you've bid on something, you can't move your bid out. So you can't just be a spoiler bid and deal with it. You only get the amount of cubes you get also decreases. Well, it, it's set at the beginning of the game for a player count. So right. for the duration of the game, you might only have four or five bidding cubes, depending yep. on how many people are in. Right. Which means you there's 10 things up for bid at any one time, Chris. So you can only bid on, <laughs> let's say you have four cubes. You can only bid on four things. Yeah, and it, it, I think it really helps make you make smart decisions. Like you really need to focus on, like you're, you're not just running around bidding people up because they're they're getting off cheap. You might do that once or twice, but if not everybody's doing it, it's not going to happen because you you need to accomplish your tasks with your bid. You know, and you, you need to get your private or you need to get your minor or you need to get your concession because you can't just open companies willy nilly in this game. You need to buy the concession, which will allow you to trade that in to open the company. So you have to and you can sit on it. You don't have to open it right away. And it, it could be wasted money if the concessions go away. Five is bought 
concessions go away. So you may have just wasted that money, but it pays in at least during the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not the end of the, the world if you don't open it up. Yeah, I, I, I love the auctions in this game because I love auctions. All games that have auctions I like. And um, I like to say that in 1822, it helps to break what I would call a truism of 18, hmm. 18xx games, right? And that yes. truism is, and truism to me means usually true, right? Yeah. Is during a stock round, spend your money, right? Invest in shares that you can invest in smartly at least. Right. Uh, because they're going to earn potentially dividends and capital gains, right? But in 1822, sometimes you're not spending all your money because you are saving your money for um, the upcoming bids. Cause you can see what's coming, right? The, right. the, the deck of privates, the deck of miners, it's fully can be fully examined by players, you know? So you can see what's coming. It's like, Oh man, I got to save 110 bucks for this company, you know, stuff like that. So of course you can always um, sell stock. If you, if you did invest, you can always divest to, to raise money and stuff like that. But I, right. I don't know. In our group, anyway, uh, sometimes we just uh, we don't buy a share um, and instead save our money because, um, you know, a, a lot of times we don't want to give our money to that player's company, you know, right. at least early in the game and stuff. So although, you know, there's a whole second thing about, well, if I take those shares, that could be a good thing because. <laughs> I'm only giving you hundred bucks for it now instead of 150 later. And you can't get that share when you do a merger, but more about that. Right. So, I mean, you know, and I guess what that illustrates, Chris is why I love these stupid games so much, right? Because <laughs> these little seemingly little decisions there, you yeah. know, that just that one thing about, do I buy that share from Chris's company as, you know, there's three things for me to think about, you know, right. Yep. There, so the, uh, and I, I think you touched on a great point, and that is you can examine the order things are coming. So you, you know, a lot of complaints get levied against um, this style of game because, you know, there's randomness to it. It's But it's only that initial mm. randomness. After that, no. it goes I have away. to take offense. Please I have do. to take offense. Please. Um, because it's not randomness. It is variation. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to me, to me, because like, so, I, you know, I, I have a thing against randomness, right? Mm -hmm. um, in these games anyway. Okay. Right. But it is very, yes. The, you don't the want to, you don't want to roll a die to see what the <laughs> no. off board is going to be that round. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I have it's to set, that it's, idea. It's set at the beginning of the game. So it's a variation <laughs> in the game, in this particular session. Right. It's more of a variable setup. Um, yes. But I think a lot of times people forget that you, you can, like we actually will order, the um the miners um on with the tokens will actually order the tokens yeah. in the order that they're going to come out um, we'll so that you can always look at it and see exactly oh well it's going to be all north next round so you know right. hopefully tony's here because chris is going to open it and lose uh, <laughs> but the uh you you do have control over that and you can see what's coming but it it's nice because it kind of forces you around the board a little bit. You're not just stuck in, oh, we're going to start with the LNWR and we're going to open that. And then Tony's going to get the lobster and the L LBSC, I believe is what it is, mm -hmm. and open up the channel. And, you know, there's sure there are opening theories, but you're not locked into this is the traditional opening. This is the better opening. Yes, you mm -hmm. want to get into London and stuff, but I don't think there's prescribed stuff. I think this yeah. kind of takes that out of the picture. So, one uh, one other thing about the auctions, at least at least in the games I've seen, I've I played eighteen twenty two fifteen times, nice. which is not a lot. Um, yeah, which is not a lot compared. But to But it's a, a lot big of game. Let, let's it's be honest. Game. This this is in that the larger. I don't. Epic is pushing it, but it's. This is the feature game of your full 18xx day. <laughs> yeah. But like those early stock rounds, because of the auctioning, mm -hmm. they can take some time. They can. Like they can take some time as people are jockeying bids around and stuff. And we like to call the privates just eye candy because arguably there's better things to spend your money on. <laughs> but some of those privates, damn it, are helpful. <laughs> and, so, yes. and people get stuck in moving their cube. And, and so it's, it's really fun. Absolutely. 
So that kind of that kind of leads up to the mergers. Now you you hinted to this when we talked about you know merging miners into full size companies because. This game, you are restricted to 60% of your stock, just like, you know, standard, except yeah. those shares can be made available through merging because you can convert yeah. your minor shares into the major company shares. So yeah, you can only, uh, you can only buy up to 60, but you right. can acquire more. <laughs> so, you know, owning, um, you know, other people's shares can really be an attack because you're going to hold them back from getting to that hundred percent of their own company. And maybe you have 20 and they have 80, but you know that they're going to, A, dumping really does not happen too much in my experience. And B, you know, this is most certainly a run good company and push that stock chart kind of game. Like I, I, so if I can ride your coattails and make some cash at the same time and keep you from getting that and yes. having that decision, uh, it's definitely behooves me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And you know, you know, Chris, I am a sucker for merger games, <laughs> you know, like it is, it is hands down my favorite mechanic of all these sure. games. And, um, in this one, it, I, I think it's really cool, right? Because once per OR, as long as, you know, the acquiring company and the acquired company have operated once, um, a, a public company can, um, you know, merge in one of those miners and sure. the public company needs to make me as the owner of that minor company financially whole. And it can do that by giving me up to two shares or cash or some combination thereof. So that's how you get over 60% in a company that you're interested in. Uh, in doing so, but uh, by by folding in the little minor companies, and of course, when you fold in a minor company, you you can put your tokens. This game has exchange tokens, so you got a handful of tokens you can just put anywhere, and a handful of tokens that you can really only use when you acquire other company uh, miners. So then you so you can spread your tokens out, and tokens are really super important in this game because of the e trains, right? Yep. Plus, you get the assets from the chart. I mean, it's just. Um, it's a fantastic mechanic, man. It's it, I think it's my favorite merger mechanic of all merger 18SX games that I've played. So you, you touched on a really good point. And it, I think that we need to, to kind of dwell on this for a moment. And that is right. the, so there is the obvious share value component. Now, if you can't take a share, uh, the company is going to pay you for it. So you're going to get cash out. So it's not the worst thing to be denied that share. But those tokens can be, that can be monumental. I mean, that can either make or break the game. And it's not that this miner has a token I want. It's that you get these exchange tokens, which now allows you to increase your, your reach and your ability for that E-train. Because the end game E-trains are so key to getting those big late runs that can just yeah. kind of, and then if you couple that with a destination, it's like, you know, you're just, you, you can like, it's like when the slot machine pays out, you just get that, that sound running through your head, like ching, 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 yep. as these suckers run. But if you ran a bunch of major companies and never really pulled anything in miners, then you're, you're not going to have any tokens to even make the E worth buying. You really aren't. Um, which it's going to certainly make less money. Yeah. And which might be fine. Maybe you, you have a Pullman and you're able to pick up a ton of dits and yeah. doinks and towns, but you know, it can, wow. It can yeah. really be brutal if you do not get those, like at least two companies in, I've seen people start miners late that they couldn't care less about just to get tokens into their company because they're like, well, I, I'm going to have an E-Train. It's stupid to have two tokens. It's yeah. not enough. I need to have more. So, and I, yeah, and, I might be yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there are many of you then. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> if, uh, if someone's listening and doesn't know the importance of the E-Train, um, an E-Train will only serve your tokens and it will right. double the value of those cities and it can run the same track as your other train. So like it's, you know, it's, it's raining pound notes. Yeah. And especially considering like if you get an E that can hit, um, you know, London and it can get up to Birmingham and Manchester, 
man, that is some serious bank that you are making yeah. every turn. Okay. Okay. Um, and if you own 100% of that, and you're just making bank, and you know, I have the stock chart up because I want you all to look in that top right corner. It's like it goes up to seven hundred dollars, people. Um, <laughs> now it, it might as well say game end because at that point <laughs> there's probably a clear winner. I usually see things hit in the fours to fives. Um, occasionally, I've seen people hit the last column. You know, it's it's an ambitious stock chart, uh, if nothing else. <laughs> Uh, that is that it is. <laughs> so, yeah, we didn't necessarily mean to talk about two merger games back to back when we set out to uh, get our schedule together. But uh, hey, but we did. So what? I, I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Can we do another merger game next next month? <laughs> What's left? What's left? And may, maybe at some point we'll even talk about some of the the monsters in the room, like seventeen or. Or USA. Yeah. Oh. Um, but down the road. But anyway, let's move on. I, th I think we're here. I, do you think we covered that? The mergers, the acquisitions, yeah. the auctions? I think we did a pretty good job with that. I'm happy. That's right. So let's get on to the gray. Because I think we all started right. talking a little bit about this already. And this is yeah. all the feels. Um, oh, yes. So, so 22 makes me feel a lot of things. It makes me feel like my eyesight stinks. Um, it makes me feel like I can't do merger games. Um, it, it does a lot of things as far as, oh, maybe emotional feelings will go with this time. Oh, um, okay. The, the one thing that I, you and I kind of exchanged notes beforehand, and I kind of scribbled a few things down, but the one that I think is definitely on both our lists is the, the epic feeling. And I think when you sit down for this and you start to pull it out and you start to put everything together, you know that this is your afternoon. You know, you know you're going to be ordering dinner when the fives pop. Like it's, this is the settle into your into your into your chair and just be ready to sit here and and play the evening away because it's it is definitely a big game, but I think it's rewarding uh, pretty much all the way through, uh, which is pretty pretty awesome um so i i love it for that i mean it has the same tile size as oe but it doesn't share any bloodlines i don't think too huge oh, with oe thank god oh wait a minute sorry <laughs> was that out loud okay. you, you did say uh, that out loud no, um okay. so well, what, what are some of the feels you have for me sir well i want to i want to add one thing to your epic Please feel do. because i i feel the same thing and and in my head you know, it's a long game. Long games tell stories. Sure. And the epic story that this game tells is the is the construction and the mature maturation of the English rail network. So you got all these miners popping up everywhere. And they're building their little spider web tendrils of track and they start <laughs> connecting. And all of a sudden you look down and go, wow, man, there's railroad all over England. You know, it's, uh, it's really killer. Right. I mean, you just have to look at this map and, and you just have to see just uh, just just how long. I mean, how many rows we have here? So sorry. Um, we have oh. <laughs> uh, 43 rows high. Oh, yeah. You know, it is a big boy and it's got Q rows wide. You do the math. I believe that's around 18 ish. Um, Somewhere in there. Yeah. But it's wow. It. It definitely lives up to that scale, and I, I think it's it's smaller tile size and board size as a result kind of kind of hide that fact. So, well, um, you know, maybe since we're on the map, um, that can give me another feel. Go ahead. That, that would be um, balance, or maybe more appropriately, imbalance. Okay. Um, and you know, and, and Mr. Cutforth in his design notes says, you know. <laughs> I'm not trying to make anything balanced here, you know, like <laughs> you guys have to glue stuff together, you know, so, I like so that. companies and miners are just, you know, populated all over the place. Uh, I would assume theoretically, I'm not a big student of British railway history, but uh, um, probably historically located. Okay. I'm sure maybe some adjustments for gameplay, but, but, but mainly um, that's where they are. And it's not meant to have a balance, right? Like the North is not as, lucrative as the South, right? There, you know, so there's not, um, 
a balance there, right? So the feel I have there is like I have to I have to fight and scratch and claw in the better areas and yeah. you know and try to try to create my own balance. And I think that that's kind of it pays homage to the true historical nature of a game, right? It's not just about you know the North should be as balanced. The North wasn't balanced, right. you know, and it wasn't easy to build up there, which is why. It came along later or there were smaller railroads operating like I, I can tell that just from playing the game. I don't need to read history books to know that these kind of things were difficult because towns were farther apart and cities were farther apart or they weren't nearly as valuable because they were, you know, not an urban center, not a port or not near, you know, Europe, whatever it is. You can tell that story from how the map is. If it's completely balanced, you lose that completely. And I think a lot of us play these games, and I think a lot more than I do, because frankly, I pl I love the me the mechanisms and the variety. But I think a lot of people who play 18xx really enjoy that historical feel, tie-in, and understanding of what was happening in railways at that time. You bet. In, it wasn't balanced, <laughs> you know. There's a no. reason. There's a reason a lot of these guys were barons and had, you know, robbers and rail barons. There's a reason we call it that because That's they're, right. not, they're not usually either of them are not fair people. <laughs> All right. So so give me some more, give me some more feels. Like I know that okay. you you have some stuff about risk in this game, risk and reward. Yeah. I, I like to think that 1822 allows me and other players to control our own level of risk and reward. Mm. And for me, that's directly related to how many minor companies I'm going to start. Right. Because, you know, I'm getting half the revenue. That's pretty good, you know, from one piece of paper. And um, but there's that whole train rush thing to worry about. Right. And so will I will I. Well, I have to buy too many trains out of pocket. Right. And how many trains can I afford to buy? How big are those loans? Um, yeah. so if I get super greedy and I'm like, Oh, this one works well with this. And so does that one. And so does that one. I'm extending my risk. I'm extending my reward. And, uh, it's fun to, um, it's fun to push that envelope a little bit and see what happens. You know, you yeah, gotta, you, you make an omelet, you got to break some eggs, right? Right. And you know, you mentioned buying a train out of pocket and that that's not horrible in this game. That that's well, not it's not going to be an ender on you. Depends if I, if I have to buy two five hundred dollar trains, then that then that's game over. If I have yeah. to, <laughs> right? But if you can no, if you can manufacture it, right? Um, yeah. But it's I don't usually think it's a good thing to buy a train out of pocket. But it's not the end no. of the world. Um, in a game Tony and I played, actually, I I I paid for a six train in a minor company. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> created a little uh, vacuum and paid for it. And it, I, I dare I say it won me the game because it had some pretty good yeah. roots that it could play with. Um, well, I will actively engineer taking small loans that I can easily pay off. Right. Because the small ones aren't so bad. It's right. the, when they add up that you have problems. Well, so, yeah, because in this game, you get an immediate 50% interest payment on that loan. Right. But there is a Correct. downside to the loans. And that means that, you know, in other, a lot of games that feature loans, that mechanic is there to keep somebody from going bankrupt, which means that it's going to keep people in the game who have no chance, per perhaps, of winning or even yeah. being competitive or being shoved into a corner and not being able to get out or whatever. And I think that that leads to a problem you have. And I, I have not witnessed, but I totally get it because it happened yeah. to me in 17 where I, you know, you're just sitting there doing a thing and it's just, that's yeah. it. That's all you're well, doing. You just, you just engineer your own bankruptcy in 17, but, right. but yeah, you're right. Um, you know, it's a perfect segue there, Chris, because of the risk reward stuff, right. Is mm -hmm. this is something I actually dislike about, um, 1822 and that is that there is no player elimination and I have seen many games well, I don't know about many but I've seen some games mm -hmm. where a player normally a player that's only played 1822 maybe you know zero one two times okay will get into deep trouble with loans and the loans are 50% interest right when you take it and then at the end of every stock round you get another 50% on you if you haven't paid it off and it can become a spiral 
Right. And um, it doesn't happen a lot, but when it does, it's a, it's a real bummer because let's say that's four hours into an eight hour game. So um, are we going to make a person um, sit there for the next four hours and know that they are sixth in a four player game? Right. Um, or, or are we going to play something else? And um, we normally opt to play something else. And where that's a real bummer is the last half of this game is where it's really badass, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, where absolutely. You're, you're running your systems and you, you set up for that E train and you want to run it. You want to get it. You want to run it, you know? Yep. So, um, so I don't know that it doesn't happen a lot when it does happen. It's a real bummer. I, I kind of wish that Mr. Cutforth did something that Mr. Villani did, right. Where you can either okay. take a loan or go watch TV. Uh, but, <laughs> well, I smell a house rule in the future, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, a little, a little unsatisfying when that happens. Yeah. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the stock market. The stock market is not super exciting. Um, you might want to shuffle for order a little bit, um, but, you know, it, it's, it's good, but I don't think it's the heart and soul of this one. I think the, uh, you know, running that minor and getting getting minors and majors to work together and build each other's track and know when to pull them in to get their tokens, and be able to afford to pull them in because nothing's worse than pulling in a minor and then not being able to afford to pay out. That doesn't mm. help you either, right? right. Um, so I think it can be a little tricky. Um, what are your do you have any other feelings on it like that that are coming to your coming to a head? Well, I mean, just just two um, that we've kind of talked about all along. So I just want to call them out here because of the feeling. OK. And it's a good feeling. Right. And that's the variability we talked about. Right. Um, and the synergies that you're looking for and building in your portfolio through those auctions. Right. Yeah, I definitely think they, they are a a huge part of making the. People win because they have that synergy, right? Because they can absorb a company that gives them tokens that they can use and track that they can use and things like that. So, you know, when you have a board this big, you tend to be doing a lot of the building yourself. You're not relying mm -hmm. on a lot of people to help you. Um, cool. Um, uh, one more feeling, if I might. One, please, feel away. Right. Feel away. So this, is, this one's kind of a, a weird feeling. Well, okay. Uh, because, I, because if it's not obvious, I... I completely love and um, enjoy playing 1822 and my thanks go out to cut forth and Peterson for producing this game. Sure. Um, but the medium regional scenario, I, I gotta be honest, it has, um, it has somewhat wilted my desire to play the full 1822 game these days. Right. So, um, so this is going to bring us to one of the, dare I say variants, uh, but this is a yeah. expansion that gives scenario. you it's a scenario. scenario. All right. So we play with uh, the, the lower two thirds of the board. Um, so I believe Manchester's our northmost, right? That's so. the top. Um, so for those of you playing along on video, it pretty much that is what you're playing on um, from Manchester yeah. down. So Sorry. almost half the board. So it takes a little, out higher. The, little higher, a little higher. Yeah. But um, yeah, but they get the gist. They get the gist. Um, but it, what else does it bring? Because it, it's sure it's going to shrink the map, so it's going to make things a little tighter. What other things are, are making that well, happen for you? Um, this is sometimes important. It cuts the playtime in half. Yes. And if, first off, like I don't mind an eight hour game, 10 hour game, whatever, sure. right? As long as that game is really that, I don't want to play 1830 for eight hours. You know? No. Um, <laughs> But it, it is advantageous to have a shorter game at, at times with our busy schedules. Mm -hmm. And um, but but number two, I, I feel like I get all those things I just I just said I liked and the things you just said you liked. Yep. In that tighter short, you're right. I get all the feels, but I think it's a tighter, sharper experience as well. The the tolerances are closer. I cannot open as many miners as right. I can in big. There's just not enough time to eat all that, right? And so things are just a little more finely tuned, and you're and you're on the part of the map that is got all the all the dollar signs on it, all the pound signs on it. Right. 
And it, it, it literally shrinks like every aspect of the game. So it's going to shrink the minor counts. It's going to shrink yes. the majors because like the NWR is not going to open because it's all the way in the North. So it, it condenses. I think that's the, that's the best word you used for it, right? It condenses <laughs> all of that and boils it down into a nice, comfy three hour game. And you can really, yeah, you can really haul on this one. So yes. I completely when you, agree. When you condense things down, they are more flavorful at times. Yes. <laughs> it's a cooking metaphor. I like it. Boy, I look, I'm talking to a <laughs> chef. You know, hey. Yeah, yes. if you don't know, Chris is a, a um, an executive chef, so yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we do that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, there are two other variants, um, two... 22 and there's no nomenclature like gb or anything but this is the original 22 and that's really all we're going to go into so we just talked a little bit about mrs we've we've sprinkled in plus which is really just it i think it kind of fills up uh regular base 22 with some of that stuff so it feels a little fuller like mrs does right where you know, it helps kind of add more to it. So I feel like there's yeah. a little more going on. 22 plus adds three privates and six minors. Yeah. And um, as I mentioned earlier, it adds that Canterbury and whistle, whatever. Right. Private that I like better than the Highland. And, um, and I like having the six minors in there because um, that will extend the ability of the game to export trains later into the game. So, right. So, I mean, plus is fun and it's not that big a deal to add it in. Um, you know, you're just adding more of the same. So it's nothing too crazy. And then there's NRS, um, <clears throat> which I've yet to play, but that's the Northern Regional scenario. So, but you have played that. What did you think? It is. I've, I've only managed to get it to the table once. I need to do it some more. Um, when Scott was here for tracks, he left the map for me to play. Okay. So. Yeah, it's very cool, but it's just the northern half of the map, whereas the MRS is the bottom half. This is the right. northern half. So there, I mean, London is an off-board location in this map. And stuff, so <laughs> that's how north um, it is. Yeah, okay. it's it's definitely not you know a mature scenario from a development standpoint, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't hate it at all. So okay, yeah, interesting. So that kind of covers the the twenty two as a whole. Now there is. Um, 22 CA, which is Canada, um, MX, never played. Which never played. It's, uh, it's interesting. Um, the, yeah, I've, I've played it twice and it's, it's pretty long. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I think it kind of almost lives up to the same hype as the original 22. Um, but potentially that would be its own show because it, <clears throat> it's quite literally its own game. Um, there are definitely some differences in minors and what's going on. It's much bigger and longer than say 1867 was, for instance. Then we also have a uh, 18 MX, which is coming out, which is the Mexico, which I think, uh, at the time of this recording is around the corner. I think it was on pre-order cause Scott's doing a mass printing of it. Um, I do believe. So that's uh, that's coming. I've yet to play that, although Baja, California looks interesting. You can just kind of <laughs> run a train down to that end. You, um, you can run a killer Pullman on that. Yes, yeah. I have played MX uh, five times. It's really okay. pretty cool. I like right. it a lot. Awesome. And then uh, I heard um, 1822 USA is in the works as well. So Yeah, I think that's what it was called. It, it, I saw some pictures on Twitter just the other day or somewhere. I saw them. I can't remember where, but yeah. So it'll be interesting to see because um, when we play these games and we play them on the scale of the USA map, um, kind of like Northern Britain suffers from not having a lot of round and needing to build a lot of track, um, coast to coast and things like that, that whole Western US is very underdeveloped and takes a long time to build up until it's on par with the East Coast. But I mean, hey, that that's that's what happened. I get it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. So they take it. Yeah, yeah. From what from what I understand, there's a neat mechanic about the westward expansion of railroads. So yeah. Yeah. Here, there, so, there. so we'll we'll talk about more of them later is if they crop up. I think um, 
you know, we can talk about mechs when that comes out. Um, yeah. You know, I, I can actually get a play into that one. I've yet to do that, um, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. So that brings us, we, we, we're coming here, we're, we're bringing it in, we're pulling up onto the siding, um, and we're, we're, we're about to, to, to land this train, because that's what you do. You, you land them, right? You land a train. You what land are, a train. Oh, are we going to have our boats. priority deal section? That's exactly where we're going with this. So we are in our priority deal. So now, priority deal is not a, a true mechanism in this game like we don't necessarily we don't that's not how the auction seating is determined but i I believe you still have something for this i i have i have the two somethings okay so um my favorite british railroad is the great western so i have a little matchbox great western train nice i like it yes it's very cool all right um and then i have something that uh, was actually a, a gift from you sir it was. It was. And that is the classic British telephone booth. That's awesome. Let me, I do let me I, get in the right spot here. There, <laughs> there we go. Yep. So because when I was out in Colorado with you, we had played MRS and it was good. So I thought it was going to be a nice little token to kind of commemorate our game together. So absolutely, man. Add it to the shelf of priority deal markers. So that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. You've got me hooked, sir. Good. Excellent. So anything else you have to add on 22 before we sign off and wrap this up? Uh, the only thing I think of is if you do not own it, please buy it because it is really cool. It is. It is. I think it's, it, I think it's going to be in the, the next round of Scott's printings for sure. And it should be because it's, yeah. it's fabulous. I, I love playing it. Um, I agree with you, though. I would rather play this and something. So MRS allows me to do that, um, oh, yeah. you know, and, Thanks. but it's, but it's nice to have the big one available because sometimes you just want to take your time and, and play a nice long one. So that's right. Pour some British beers, some British ales and uh, play. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So without further ado, I believe we are going to wrap this episode up. This has been a blast. Tony, where can people find you if they want to, uh, you know, stalk you on the internet? Because you, you're pretty good about posting pictures of things you're playing as well. Too. Yeah. You get the fun stuff. Yeah. The only social media I partake in is Twitter. Mm-hmm. And um, it my I am at A Fryer Games. All right. Because I am a fryer and I tweet about games. <laughs> you are a fryer. Like, do you walk around <laughs> handing out beer? Actually, it's F R Y E R. Wrong ah, fryer. Oh, yes. Right. <laughs> Not a monk. No. No. <laughs> um, and you can find me. Um, I am basically, you can find me at Game All Night Show, is the one Twitter handle I use the most often, uh, and followed by our show tag, which is going to be uh, at Wheel Tapping. Um, all one word. So, oh, look at that. He has on our, our, our corporate t-shirt. I love it. I love it. Basically, you can reach us there. Uh, you can also send us an email at wheeltapping at gmail.com. So if you have thoughts or prayers that you want to send about future episodes, <laughs> thoughts and prayers, they go along together, don't they? They, they do. Thoughts and prayers. So you can feel free to shoot us a line if there's something you'd like us to cover or um, I always try to tell you what we're doing next. So if you have questions uh, specifically, you can send those in as well. And speaking of next, um, what do you, what do you want to do next time, Tony? I, I kind of have an idea. Uh, you know? What is your idea? Uh, 18 M E X 18 Mexico. I think that's I it. That I, I love that game. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get a guest in here because I think we're I think we do well when we have a guest. I think we're gonna shoot to do that like every other episode or show. Okay, I like that. Okay, yeah. I do. You have that. someone in mind or? Uh... Um, I do. He might be a friend of yours. You may have. He may have been on the Dual Gauge pos- podcast in the past as well. So, oh. um, you know, more details as we solidify that. Oh. So that'll be our January episode. We'll shoot to do Mexico. So, I love um, it. I love yeah. it. And for those of you playing along at home, I did uh, 
I'm not soliciting directly, but if you'd like to contribute to the show, because I've had one or two people ask, uh, I just set up a Patreon um, at patreon.com slash wheel tapping. If anybody wants to give anything to help cover any hosting costs or whatever, that's I, I just make the blanket statement that I'm not trying to do this for a living. And that's a good thing because you don't want me doing that. But it does rather help. have you cooking. Right. Exactly. Um, but it does help to cover the costs uh, and, and keep the lights on and potentially fund, um, you know, tracks events, because I, I would love, you know, so tracks is Tony's. So, so if you're still hanging out and you're still listening to the show, you're going to get a little little scoop here. So right. so Tony does tracks in Colorado and it's mm-hmm. amazing and it's April and I, 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 I will make it one of these years. Um, for yes, sure. you will. But, you know, we also want to maybe do tracks East and do something yes. out this way. So it'd be nice if we could go to each yeah. other's things. So, uh, well, uh, <laughs> tracks, is, yeah, tracks is a, uh, 18XX convention and, uh, you will be officially sanctioned for tracks East anytime you want to yes. do it. So we might do that in the fall of next year, potentially. Um, I kind of have some free time right now, so <laughs> I will, uh, I will see maybe visit some hotels and see if we can muster it up. But uh, I, I have a good feeling that that would be a lot of fun and well attended out here because we don't have a, I mean, Hadanuga the big one, but we don't, we have a few Chattanooga, smaller ones. Hattanooga, yeah, there's, yeah, a, yeah, there's some other ones. There's D-Rail. But yeah, there are so many players on the East Coast, man. There are so many players. Right. So it'd be nice to do something. And uh, I, I have some thoughts. So you may hear more on that later. But enough of me rambling. Uh, that's just it. And uh, we're going to bring this episode to a close. So thank you so much for watching and uh, or listening. And we look forward to talking to you. Can you believe I'm going to say this right now? In 2020. That's that's the next time we'll talk to you. So have a good, safe new year. And we'll see you then. Good night. Thank you.